everyone, I'm Lauren from The Painted Pooch. We're gonna be doing a tutorial today on Choo Choo. Um, excuse us, everybody has been calling the shop or trying to get in on the action right when we started to go live. Um, anyway, if you guys have seen the flyer, we will be doing this guy today for you. And this is actually the same dog, so it's gonna be a pretty fun thing. Okay, this is my assistant, Miss Kelsey everyone see we have three viewers so far we will be here to answer questions first we're going to start with doing our dye job application and then we are going to get in some different techniques and tricks you can do to be able to utilize this in your shop um, as well as things you can do to have a good creative base in your uh, salon um, Okay, first off, with dogs that are gonna get creative grooming, it's good to start off with a good, clean dog. Um, res residual oil on dogs could cause your dye to not stay or saturate correctly. So um, I usually wash them with Hypo. Hypo tends to be the better shampoo for just getting out most oils and not leaving too much of a perfume. Okay, so we're gonna get going here. All right. Okay, so if you guys look at the picture or you did base it, when you have a lot of rainbow colors, there's two different techniques that you could start off with. You could start off with lighter and go into dark. With this one, I kind of like to start the borders off dark and go in light, so that way we can use it to ombre and get the color to set. Um, if you guys do have any issues with seeing anything I'm doing, please let us know. We're trying to keep this angled so everyone gets a good view and control a very hyper pit bull. Okay, so that being said, you can see we have a lot of white through here. I'm gonna go in. And the fun thing about doing any kind of paint job that we know there's someone out there, shush, um, is that it doesn't have to be perfect because paint is not perfect. So you're gonna wanna start and make sure that you're pushing against the hair and then into the hair, against and in. Of course, the phone's gonna go. All right, so you kind of are just gonna decide, like I like to do blue to a lighter. I'm also gonna be looking at my reference because a lot of times I just do this with complete ADD and don't really know what I'm doing. All right. With pit bull hair, pit bull hair, even though it is short, pit bull hair does not like to saturate very well. So you're going to have to like go over this quite a bit and brush it in a lot or else you're going to see a lot of white spotting even though they have short hair. Don't worry if it overlaps into the gray. Overlap with this kind of a dye job is really good because that's going to give you that kind of natural flow of paint. Now I'm going to get so I'm going to go ahead and start to do a little drip. So that's just going to be slow line, just kind of let it fall. So we've got our blue on there. Okay. Watch your hands. You're going to get done. See, you just dyed your hand. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to take my brush and kind of start to get that color in there before I worry about going into the next color because we don't want it to not be saturating well. So. I want you guys to kind of pay particular attention on this edge. I am trying to blend it in there. It's okay, baby. I know. There's all kinds of people outside that are not social distancing. Okay. All right. So let's see. Can I see a reference of the color, the palette, please, madam? All right. So now that we got the blue in, Go into, I'm gonna add a little more to this guy just to make it fun. Hey! Of course, usually when you do this, you, you probably won't have a helper, so you're gonna have to have them restrained quite well because they're just gonna wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right, so if you guys wanna be good with rainbows and 
doing color work, it's good to know your colors. Get a good color chart from any art store so you know what colors are gonna favor each other. Especially when you're doing dye jobs because if the colors clash too much, you're gonna create ugly colors that you don't want when you mix the wrong ones. Okay, so with the green, we're gonna go in, try to keep to the line, but like I said, we're gonna use the brush to kind of help that smooth. And remember that we're also gonna be going forward first and then back. I know, I know, I know. So boring. So yeah, just stroking back and then four. Get that color in there. Green can be a harder color to kind of get in there. So it needs a little extra love. Some of the spot work and stuff we'll do after the fact. Some we'll do as we go. We're also going to be doing her neck but we'll do that last. So I know if you guys and I'm blocking everything. Can you hold your head up pretty good? It's okay, baby. We're gonna get so many cookies. So when you're creating an ombre, going in and sliding those colors into each other a little bit is good because it's gonna look really cool at the end. Honey, it's okay, let her relax her head. She's gonna flip out. Okay, so you see we've got really good flow here. Like, I don't know if you guys can see close enough, but this is really starting to blend and look nice. Make sure that you're using like a comb that's not gonna clash too much and stretching them out, but then you're gonna go in and just brush those colors in. Brush with the hair, not against. If you start brushing too much against, that way you're gonna splatter color. But with this kind of paint job, it would actually work out really nicely. So, yeah. Get that color in there. And like I said, if you guys are having trouble seeing any of this, we do have Carla in the background here that will let me know and we'll try to zoom in a little bit for you guys. Okay, now that I have that brushed out, like I said, green can be a little bit more stubborn, so I'm gonna go back over because I can still see some white. With this kind of a dye job, you really don't wanna have, you would think we weren't closed in Washington. Ring, ring, ring. Um, with this kind of a coat, you really want to make sure you don't have any whites hanging in there. All right. Uh, if you guys look at the reference picture here, yellow is very vital in this piece. With yellow, you're going to be able to really see all the drip marks. So you're going to need a lot of yellow, but we're also going to, I'm going to show you how you can do this without it being too messy. Okay. So we're going to get into some yellow work. Let me just disconnect the phone. I'm just gonna leave it off the hook. Oh, there you go. All right. I'll it afterwards. Yellow is also a harder color to get in. And I also did not drip my brush off. Don't do that at home. Or at the salon, not at home. Okay, so when you're doing these, like if you sit there and do really straight lines, it's not gonna look as good. It's not gonna look as organic. We're not going for organic here, so I want you guys to kind of be splashing this around. And this is a really great upsell for dogs in your salon because you can work with dogs with these short coats so much easier than you do with dogs that have to get a haircut. So this is a really great dye job because you can do it, once you perfect it, you can do it really fast. And you can make good money off of it. So, I mean, as, any salon, you should start off by figuring out what you would charge an hour for creative grooming. Um, we won't get into mine. Everybody has different rates, but you know, if you're a slower creative groomer, you don't want to charge too high because then people aren't going to get it done. So as you get better at it, you can kind of increase your price. So now with the yellow, you have to be really careful because if you move the brush too fast, you're going to get that in there. So we're going to brush that edge and kind of blend that in. And kind of create this really cool like lime green effect into it. All right. So I'm using a color scheme of going from cool colors to hot fire kind of colors. So that's what you do with the green babies. And I am using all permanent dye. 
So this babe, because when the short hair dogs, they don't tend to keep their color for as long. All right, should we do, let's do some orange. I'm, I'm kind of improving at this point. <laughs> it should never be exactly the same. We got to do it better each time. All right, so I'm going to go in. And here's where it's going to get a little fun because this is where we're going to start adding some splats. So we're gonna get that guy in there. Paint all those happy little trees. All the happy little trees. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna take my little brush here. Lots of brushes, get them at Michael's. You can get them for really cheap. Okay, so now I'm gonna just kinda get some splats. She's like, there are people walking around outside. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush and just do a couple of drips. Okay. All right, moving right along. I don't know if any of you guys have used the Opaws Magenta Pink, but it's amazing and it stays forever. So I use it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So we're gonna get that guy going too. You also don't have to be like me and leave your dye on the table. That's really trusting. I shouldn't be doing it, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> All right. See, and I'm kind of letting this drip on purpose. So if you are really careful and you let those drips happen, you can kind of get some of those organic drips going on with your fun. The cool thing about the pink is the pink will actually go over this color of the pit. Okay, we're gonna get this one in and then we're gonna start doing some uh, brush work to get that color to stay. This will be a really good upsell because pride is coming up and everybody wants rainbow jobs. So, I mean, challenge yourself, find new things, look up rainbow art, find something nobody else has done. The key trick to having really good creative work on your dog is knowing how to saturate and saturating well. I know a lot of you have dyed hair and you know the more dye you put in, the more you saturate, the more brush work you do, the better it's gonna sit. That's the same being with this. Question. Uh, I'm answering some of them, but um, unfortunately, I don't know if there's a way that we can angle it a little bit better. We're getting a lot of um, your back rather than your hands working. Ah, okay. Let's see. Be doop, be doop. Let us. This better, guys. There's a little bit of a time delay. I'm not a. I'm not a videographer, so let's see. Can you guys see this? That looks better. That looks like it's going to be better. Yeah. There's Carla. We're all masked up except for me because I can't talk to you guys in that muffled thing. Okay, so we're just getting, so I'm gonna brush this color into the coat. So you can kind of see how cool that kind of looks right there where it's kind of going against the natural tone of your dog. That's why this dye job is super fun because you can just kind of be a sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. And if you drip, it's great because you just work it into there. All right. So now we're going to bring in the pink. And we're going to bring the pink over a bit into the coat. Where are you going? Oh, see, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Let me know when you're moving. <laughs> that was about to be rainbow, too. All right. <laughs> I know it's just, it's I don't want to sit still. We're very anxious pitbull. Probably don't do videos of pitbulls, but this is the one you guys wanted to see, so. All right, so we're just gonna get that in there. 
I'm not, I'm going to do the neck really fast towards the end because there's no brilliance in that. We're going to get this down then we're going to focus on those really cool legs, which I think really sell the entire piece. And this is a good, you know, people are like, well, my dog's got brown and black. Or if they've got any light spots, you can do creative. So I'm just checking to make sure colors are running through here. Brushy, 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 brushy. You're fine. You're going to get so many cookies. Okay. Can I get a reference pick for those legs? I want to see where we should start. Okay. So, I like to go against the grain here, and I like to kind of add my darker colors and work around them. You might find it easier to put the light colors on first. So, I actually load the brush up push against the coat and try to get it to drip a little bit. So there we go. We got a pretty little guy like that. Also having a couple of little stripes is going to help me kind of decide where I want to go with the other colors. When you do do the drip, you're going to have to be really careful going around with the yellow, even though the yellow is going to be great just kind of because it'll make it, if it turns a little green, that's fine. But that's kind of how I like to do it because I like to make it look like it was natural. And of course, you guys have noticed in the thing that there's black. We're going to do, the black is very last. So now I'm just going to get in there and get some yellow in there and see I got a little of that pink, but I love it. I'm actually going to use my brush here and I'm going to go in. Can you guys see that? I'm going to go in where there's dye already and I'm actually going to push some of that color together so we get some rainbow effect in there. <laughs> Sit still, madam. I know. It's boring. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there. I wanna get some of the green in. So just go in really thick. And get that green. And see, even with going over the yellow there, I don't know if I can see that. Um, it's, it's really not affecting the green so much. So many colors, so many choices. Okay, now we're gonna take some of these drips and just drip some color through and have it go in. I mean, the cool thing about dripping color or letting it drip is that you're gonna see where it naturally would fall. And it kind of looks like we've been finger painting, which is what we want. We're so excited. Usually we're strapped this way. This is a lot more room to play, isn't it? That's why I have a Kelsey. That's the only reason. Mm -hmm. Not sure why else we have you. Just okay. Okay. Stop it. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go back with the yellow. Like I said, don't worry about overlapping. With leg hair, you don't have as much hair to deal with, so you're not going to need to do as much brushing as you do on the top coat. Dogs naturally don't have a lot as much coat down that way. Get some yellow in there. It also helps if you make brush noises. The pew pew really helps with getting your color in. So now we're going to be getting into those toes. What's really cool is if you go ahead and dye the toenail, you get rainbow toenails. Which is great. Okay. So notice I don't have lines come. You just don't want to do straight lines. That's not what's going to happen. There'd be some breaks in it. So it'd be like a little splatter here. Beep, beep, beep. 
I love the super black. I feel like super black will tie in all of your colors really well, like using it for most of your dye jobs. Implementing black is always gonna give you a good outline basis. Cause right now it's just blobs. But once we go in and add all the black, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's why you guys really should just have a lot of fun with it is what I'm trying to say. Cause that's an important part of creative grooming. Cause it's not like this stuff is easy. Are you ticklish on this side? <laughs> We're ticklish. <laughs> We're ticklish. Okay, so we're gonna get that blue in. Is it a tickle foot? This is a tickly foot. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's like, knock it off, lady. All right, we already have really good lines for that one. Um, once we get everything done and stuff, I'm gonna open up the floor for questions and also help you guys figure out ways to be able to upsell your clients into this. Um, Opaz does have a book coming out soon that we can talk about with a lot of tutorials and also I, yours truly will be in it, kind of teaching you guys how that you can implement this into your, your clientele, how to get people, how to charge them correctly. I really do think a lot of this is undercharged. You have to understand that your products are, we're dripping on that foot, but that's okay. We want it to drip. Um, your products are expensive, your time is expensive, and this is, I mean, when a dog's coming in like this, they're going to be here a long time. So those are things that I'm going to be here to answer some questions for if I can help with that, because we do have quite a bit of established creative clientele at the salon. Okay, so we're just going in with our yellow, and I'm being kind of messy and drippy because I want it to drip. not letting you send comments well just ask me and I'll answer it what what is it when oh guys what I'll do is um once I'm done posting we can give you a link for our shop uh, I have we're working on different computers excuse you you need to go this way apparently Choo Choo is now got a little stage fright um so we will be addressing that I don't know why you can't be signed if you're signed in as me yeah. it's weird so now I'm going to go back up here real quick because I want to start working our way into the black so eh, we're getting antsy so yeah like I said we're just going to be kind of splotchy and she's getting really antsy too, so. <laughs> I think she might have farted. She might have a poop. Oh. Well, I don't know if people like, you know, you guys don't know how to deal with a dog shit. Poopy, ooh, pooping on the table. Sorry, I don't know if I can cuss. I'm not gonna cuss. Girls don't cuss. No, we don't. Such good girls. All right. Good girl. So I'm just gonna brush that in. I just wanted to kind of match up these lines and get a little dark in there before I get the black in. This may be a little messier than my first one because she is definitely more fidgety. I think she's camera shy and she decided that her feet are ticklish. It's a lot warmer in here today too. I got the AC on. She's, she's warm today. It's hot, too. hot. She's, she wants she's, she's fine at the moment. All right, guys, let's see. So we're going to get a little pink on there. Hey, Come on, no, no, no. She ticklish. Can you guys see this foot? Okay. That's her ticklish foot. She's very ticklish. All right. Good job. Good job. Okay, so we're just going to get the moves on here. Get this yellow in. So I'm gonna go in with the yellow on this foot and just kind of smear these colors a little bit on the top. See how it's creating kind of this rainbow of the different tones up into there. You're gonna need a brush for mixing because this one's not gonna be good for anything else after this. So see that kind of smears in that foot a little bit more. <laughs> he missed that. 
I made my hand with that nerf. All right, now I'm just gonna get some more yellow in and we're gonna get that black down. Um, on this gal, the last time I wrote on her side, like love, and I put some color on it. I mean, it's pretty much, you could do whatever you feel like doing. And as you can see, like I know that some of you are really familiar with doing colors, some aren't, but this is a really good starter one because like I said, you can't really mess this up because it's supposed to be smeary. So it's a good practice starter. I know a lot of you guys, if you're like me, you have short corded dogs that don't need haircuts because you don't want to give them haircuts. <laughs> or you have stinky little wiener dogs that are not here or else we wouldn't be able to film anything if any of you have met Nina. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. At first I was like, are we talking about the person? No, we're not talking about the person. We're talking about the dog. Silly puppy. Okay, so with these splots, you don't want too many splots. You want to really work them in and make them less predictable. See, that looks a little better. And I'm putting in some different raw color here. Okay, for purple. Is purple. I'm getting all my colors mixed up. The purples look too much alike. I was able to get in there on my phone, so it'd be easier for me to comment. Okay. Carla's ask question. Carla says ask questions. Ask away. She's <laughs> fixed the technical difficulty here. I'm sure it's operator error, but you know, technology. <laughs> All right, so another way that you can get some of these lines too is just taking your brush and kind of going like this up and down the leg. That works too to kind of stretch those out. See, I can make it kind of, I don't know if you guys can really see this. Let's get you in there. So it kind of spreads that splatter out a bit, see? So I'm taking it and going and I'm making that noise. All right. Looking good, choo choo. You good girl. She's like, I'm so bored. You humans suck. My humans are home all the time. I want to be home. Getting lots of compliments. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, guys. Rainbow's like my favorite. Those that know me, I wear a lot of blacks, but I, when I do creative grooming, I'm very like color, 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 color. Oh, Lindsay's on here. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay. So where does she go? Ah, I I'm just dropped, sorry. Lindsay, I just dropped my brush on the floor and made a huge mess. That's for you, Lindsay. <laughs> I did that just for you. Face push. Pew. You did say that. <laughs> All right, we're going to go in with the, we're going to go in with the black now. If I could get my screen to load. Let's see about it. All right, so like I told you guys before, black is good to create a border. So... Check my camera and go, Kelsey, you just keep checking. With the black o paws, you're not going to see it at first. Don't fear. It's definitely there, and it will be there like a mofo in any moment. So just bear with it. Such a good puppy. Such a good puppy. Very annoyed. <laughs> For being so patient. She keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, she's doing the Lauren size. <sighs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to get the black on both sides and just kind of outline our wonderful work. As you've seen in these pictures, my favorite part of this dog is literally the legs and this part. So this is my da da. I'm going to outline you and show you off. And then we can get rid of some of this color that doesn't look natural. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all of this away with the black. Be patient with the black. It takes a second to oxidize. All right, now I'm gonna get my tiny brush. See, the floor looks better when we drop paint. We should just slatter paint the whole thing. It would be gorgeous. <laughs> Y'all do not want to see the floors here. It would match us all. <laughs> they are very chic. Um, so we have uh, someone asking a question. Carrie is asking, do the colors fade faster on short-haired coats than long-haired coats? Any tips for coloring on short-haired dogs? Oh, do, 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 do. Okay. Um, you know what? That is a very good question. On short-haired dogs, it does fade a lot faster. Um, 
So on the longer hair dogs, like, I mean, I have some dogs that I've dyed and it's been like six months and they're still dyed. But that's like on like Pomeranian type coats or like poodle coats. On this guy, it'll probably be gone in like two to three months and fade out. Um, that's why I'm really stress saturating and letting it sit a long time. Like, uh, we'll probably let this gal sit for a good, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes just to get that color to stay in. And also the brushing into it. But what I tell clients, like if they want the dog to last, if you can book your clients so you have them come in for a dye job and then six to eight weeks later come in for a touch up, it's, it's going to be really easy to refresh and then it seems to last even longer that way. So I hope that kind of answers that question. But yeah, it's definitely more of a temporary thing with these guys, even with the permanent color, just because they create so much oil. And they're little shed machines. So now we're just going to take the black and kind of splotch. I know you're just so excited. Hi. Ooh, this tastes like tuna. <laughs> Thank you. That went up my nose. Dogs don't know how to social distance. <laughs> All right, so now we're just adding in this black. And I'm getting the spots down. I'm, I haven't forgot to go back and brush. I kind of wait a second so the black can oxidize so I kind of see what I'm doing. We're going to do a pretty little paint splatter. Beep, beep, beep. I expect to see a bunch of these on Opaws next week. So you guys can utilize, go home, practice. A lot of us have a lot of time since we're not open. So have some fun. Get your game on and then get into this and charge people a ton of money to do fun things. All right, so now we can see this black is starting to be with us. So now I'm going to start with the pink and brush this way first. You don't want too much black going into your other colors because that's, it's more of an outline. It's a statement piece. <laughs> You're like our dog fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, and if remember the technique where I said just take your brush and scroll down. Looks like we have some past painted pooch employees here. Got a handful on a there. lot of them. Hello, ladies. <laughs> she responded to you dropping the brush. Lindsay did. Oh, what? She says, of course you did, you slob. <laughs> of course. Hey, <laughs> OCD queen, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> I am a glorious mess. Blah, blah. We've got somebody watching from Queensland, Australia. So we've got- Oh, hello, Australia. Australia. Cool, got people I don't know and people I do know. This is great. So you guys just load me up with some questions because we all know that I don't like to talk. <laughs> Lakota's on here too. Hi, Lakota. Hello, Lauren. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Apparently, our front and back feet are very ticklish. Uh -huh. Feet are great because you just go in there really fast. It even looks cool when you do some lighter spots. One of our girls that worked here before, Jessica, I don't know if she's watching, Jessica Crosby, she did a really cool paint splatter piece because she thought she messed up with color and I was like just roll with it that's the cool thing about creative most clients are just like I don't know I just want something fun we have uh, Jessica Crosby saying that uh, Lauren we should do a creative project in either Roxas or Alita oh I'm down those cute pups let's just get out of this freaking pandemic and start having some fun ladies we could just have a dye party. Oh my God. <laughs> we can all drop our brushes and make the painted pooch floor. That's so ugly. Those that have worked here know it's the ugliest floor in the world. Stop, stop. Okay, so I'm just slopping some color on these really fast because 
Choo Choo says, this is really, you guys are annoying me. Nope. Brick -a -burr? That, that was you. That was me. I know. I heard my own obnoxious <laughs> voice. Not obnoxious. I hate, everybody hates their own voice. I know. I sound like a child thing. myself. It's okay. I or you know you're afraid you're going to look at the camera and be like, mm. <laughs> What do I have to do? I also wear this much makeup whenever I groom, always. <laughs> that's a, t yeah, that, that happens. Lakota does. Lakota's always getting the makeup on and waking up early. Not this gal. All right. So I'm going to go in and paint in between the toe beans. And uh, she says, eh. So what's really cool with these guys, I'll move the dye. I take a darker color and go in just to kind of make it pop in there. And she's going to be like, I'm ticklish. Does anybody have any questions so far about anything that we've done? I mean, it's pretty, like, self-explanatory. Um, I'm going back over and just darkening some areas and getting more splat, splat. This is a dye job made for creative messes like me. It's perfect. <laughs> I'm good at it. Hey! <laughs> She's going to get the back of her legs all colorful. Cause she keeps put the chicha back. She does look like she's smiling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> good girl. Yo, she's like, I'm so excited. <laughs> so, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? She okay. wants to sit on that side. Okay. She wants to face Carla. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the cross says, yes, I'm here. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, of course you are, girl. Stop! Where are you gonna go, honey? Do you need a hip strap? Um, Karen Jones wants to know if we wash and dry the dogs first. Yes. We and do. We, we do. As well. Um, yeah, we were talking about that earlier, but I know some people are in and out. Um, definitely, I always wash dogs first because do all dogs have a residual oil that can make your dye not stay as well. So if you have a good clean dog, I recommend Hypo. Hypo tends to be, you know, a little less abrasive on the coat because you don't want to stress the coat too much because you could cause the dog to have sensitivities. And you also don't want to offer this service to a dog that has hot spots or medical issues. This is, a, dye jobs are meant for dogs that sit still. I, I'm not wearing gloves. Look, Lindsay, I didn't wear gloves and I got dye. She always says I never get dye on there. Um, that sit still, have a good personality. You also don't want to do this on a dog that's uh, sh shy or aggressive towards other dogs because when people see this, they're like, I need to go pet you. So these are all things that go into um, picking your clients and knowing how to upsell them and what, which we'll discuss. It'll also be in the pause book, which I oh, wait, have explained. Hello, Ireland. Hello, Ireland. All the all the cool creative groomers on one thing. We're just all so awesome. Okay, I know you're ticklish on these back feet. All right. I'm just trying to get all this in there, and then we're gonna do the love sign on the side. And okay, I'm gonna quickly do the throat. This part's I'm not gonna lie, this part sucks. Cause we're like, ah Okay, ready, Kelsey? Mm-hmm going in. So you just kind of got to go quick because no dog is patient about this. Stop it. Nope. She's like, stop holding my face. I know, baby. I know. This is why she got a splatter drop. <laughs> Are you just sneeze in my face? Yeah. <laughs> If your dog is really wiggly, you don't have to do this. I just have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going? No! Kelsey. Kelsey, do I need to go get a cookie? Do I need a towel? What do you need? Cookies. Cookies. Okay. Cookies and towels? Okay. All right. You hold her up. With all your might, Kelsey, I'm just going to go. So, yeah, like I said, we're just going to go in here fast and get her done. Eh, eh, eh. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, let's get that strap back on her neck. I don't care if it gets color on it. Okay. All right. 
Now that I am rainbow too. There you go. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to kind of look at my angles. <sighs> okay. I'm going around over here. Towel. Okay. We're good. Okay, it'll be she okay. was just like, I'm ready to take a nap. Okay. <laughs> so I'm kind of like brushing and letting colors splotch on the feet back here. Cause that's pretty. And she's also over me. Um, so that's the joy of usually if she was at the shop, we would have already had like a walk or like CBD or something. Right. Uh, we have another question. Um, mm -hmm. Someone is asking, uh, may I ask how many years you have provided creative grooming services at your salon? And do you have any suggestions for us who don't know how to start? Um, yeah, I have a bunch. Um, so I have been running this salon for almost six years. Um, I have, oop, I'm pretty sure I just dyed my face. Um, I have implemented creative systems in all the salons I've worked at, which I've worked at quite a few. So yeah, once we get this dye on her, um, I'm gonna go open the floor up and just talk to you guys for a while kind of about how you can get this started in your salon, how to price it, how to do consults, all the things um, to help you get this going as a constant customer basis with your clients. So I don't know if that made sense. A creative basis. So yeah, we will get into that, but I'm happy to answer those questions. I think everything starts with figuring out what you're worth and your price. Like I said, when you're doing creative grooming, not a lot of people do it. So you should price high. It's expensive, it's art, and it lasts a really long time. If people don't wanna to commit to that, then they don't need to get creative grooming. It's not, it's not essential. <laughs> do I have a dye on my face? Just a little. Just a little bit on your chin. <laughs> Chat towels on the chair. Yeah. Yeah, there was somebody else who asked just after that said, I am a beginner in dying uh, any tips. And that would be good with the book. Can you undie yeah. me? Yes. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> it's okay, she should help. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you're going to have dots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great. Right. I have photo they're, shoots they're really this week. Tiny. This they're is really, going to be really awesome. Um, are, are, speaking of, uh, is there anything that helps? Get rid of that. Like I know sometimes when I'm using human dyes for myself, I'll use um, vinegar. Scrub it, scrub it, and scrub it. Scrub it. Scrub it. I'm gonna go toothpaste. use some 256 on my face right now. <laughs> that, was, uh, <laughs> that was when Puppy decided it was gonna go. Yeah, back. got a couple little splatters. So we're getting all ah, sorts of shit. educational information here. <laughs> okay, well, what was, that, for the, what was the, the beginner's question? The, I'm a beginner in dyeing any tips. So that kind of went over. You went over a little bit answering the previous question. But also, I feel like it, it, you mentioned that they were going to be releasing a book on creative dyeing. Um, oh, pause is yeah. working on doing a book. See, I'm adding some pink in here because I oh, love the pink. I know, baby. I know, I know. Do you baby want a cousin? We're just bored. Um, might make it better, might make it worse. What, what kind of tips are you just looking for, like, how to begin getting people to want it or is your question more about how to technique or technique like my technique is always like saturation lots of dye making sure your color is actually going to stay is a big vital part of this um knowing your design like i will draw up a design for um my clients like i usually have like a little model of a dog and i'll come up with little ideas and show it to them um and then start small go bigger i would start with just I mean, if you can achieve dyeing a tail, a tail is hard because they don't sit still. It's also good practice. Make sure that you get plenty of blocker because you do not want to have a dog with a purple butthole. I did that the other day and I felt really <laughs> bad, but then I couldn't stop laughing. So there was also that and the owner thought it was funny. But <laughs> you get the wax protector for that. But start small. Don't try to give yourself too much. Like this is a great job for you guys to start off with because like I said, it's very forgiving. Because if I splatter somewhere, it just looks cool. So start with things like that. Um, and start with a dog that you know is very still. Choo Choo's pretty still, but today she's like, da 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 da. She's just smiling at me. I think she just cussed me out and dug. I have blue spots all over my chin. They're very tiny. Shut up. 
<laughs> They're not liars. <laughs> Just figures I have a photo shoot on Thursday. Hopefully it's gone. Did you have good makeup? Yeah, good makeup. <laughs> And be like, what was Elvira doing? Oh my Ooh. god. <laughs> Hello. All right, so now I can kind of see that this black didn't oxidize right here, so I'm just gonna touch it up. So as you guys can see, this is pretty much, I mean, this is pretty good. We could add more, we could add less. Less is more. Less is more. If you want to go in and do too much, not only is your dog gonna be like, bye, and I'm gonna run off the table and you get a blue chin like I have right now. Um, but you know, this is already pretty. So we're gonna to turn to the side here. Let's go ahead and hip strap her. Badtron, the other way, please. But towards the the other way, please. I'm gonna move the bowls. We're gonna see if we can rainbow the floor. Excuse me. All right, and then it's gonna. Then we're gonna answer some questions, and we're gonna get her washed and rinsed, and you guys can see the final product. Get up there, girl. Groomer helper. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, that would be called. Cool. That is a Kelsey era. She's like, I want to sit down. I, do we have the shorter? There's the shorter. Okay, so now we can kind of see where we have been a ants in the pants McGee over here. So I'm going to add in some fun splats. Like I said, get your blobs in and then we'll brush them in. Will you stop it? Do we need to like groom or help her? her? And get these areas. Just quick blobs. I'm gonna brush these in. Like I told you guys before, we gotta get those brushed. I love the pink because the pink sits in this coat really well. So I'm gonna take my brush and see how I'm kind of doing this and making the dye kind of move. See? La, 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 la. Make it a drip. <laughs> Make it a drip. And then we want to do this. Just let that drip. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. Kind of going quick because she's kept it. Um, Hunter is asking if you have any tips on dyeing black dogs. Okay, black dogs can be complicated, especially if the dog has any kind of skin issue and how well they're being upkept. Um, Opaws does make a really great lightener. Um, my thing with lightener, like, so when a dog's gonna get lifted, I do not wash the dog first. I do the lift first because that residual oil actually helps your dog not creep, get damage from it. Um, anything that lifts can cause irritation to the um, skin. So you're gonna wanna offer a medicated bath with that as well. Um, so do your medicated bath after you do the bleaching. Um, sometimes it doesn't all come out at once. You're never going to get a super perfect dog. The dogs that I've gotten really light have come in for multiple sessions. And a lot of dogs are not going to let you sit there and just give them five baths in one day. I have one dog named Recco that is just amazing. <laughs> and he's good with it. But that's the trick with lightning. Um, if you have a client you've never done before, start off small, just do like a little space and maybe try doing like a design and see how they do with it because it's a lot of work and it's very expensive. So the client also needs to be willing to pay a lot of money. So I hope that kind of answers that question. But if you go to the Opaws site, they have a really great lightening cream. And remember, no bath, lighten, then bathe with medicated and then get your dye on there. Um, Catherine uh, is asking if you, because you're brushing in the color, um, would you do the brushing on a hairy dog as well while dyeing? Yes. Um, brushing in your color should be for any dye job that you do, no matter what their length is. Um, if you're not brushing in, like you will not, you will miss spots and nothing sucks like doing a job this hard and then washing the dog and seeing this natural color in the middle of your skin. So you really want to brush them with the longer hair. I mean, when your long hair is also really hard to dye, you're, you're going to be really stuck with doing something that's not like symmetrical because once hair lays, it goes different. But you definitely want to pull that hair. And what I use is I take a, a Frisbee 
and I will grab the hair and I will brush the hair like this so I can get all the color in if I'm doing individual things. Things like Frisbees are great. And potty pads are awesome. Potty pads keep you from having a purple butthole, which I forgot the other day. <laughs> so this duck had the biggest purple butthole. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little black up here and bring out some colors. <laughs> Sarah says, try wiping these slacks with milk, haha, and she's looking grand. <laughs> with milk? That's what she says. Yeah. Would that, that affect a vegan differently? Oh, there's that. I don't own milk. What about oat milk? Can I use oat <laughs> milk? Toothpaste works too. So, yes, we're just, I think we're just gonna, I did write love on it before, but to be honest with you, I thought it was super cheesy. I don't wanna. So, we're not gonna add that. But it's not right. It's not Pride Week. It's always Pride Time. It's but. always. Always. So you guys can kind of see this looks really cool. I just feel like if you're going to get this much color on a dog, you should try to add some colors in elsewhere. I know, baby. I'm going to go around to this side and see what's going on. Hello. Hello. I know. Are you just oh. so? She's like, I'm so fucking over you. All right. Lindsay said earlier, we were talking about how long the, day, the dyes stay. Uh, Tiki still has a little blue in his tail from February 2019. Tiki holds dye like a mofo. He is like, <laughs> that's because special hair. Tiki's mama dyes him all the time. So he is definitely a dye king. But those, yeah, some of those dogs will really hold their color for sure for a long time. Sure, for so Unfortunately, like for example, I have a short haired dog named Bub. And he likes to sit like a frog. So I put Bub on his butt, which brought great humor to my life. And it was gone. It was gone so fast. It was like gone. And I and if you guys that also know me know how often he gets a bath. Or his nails done. Being picked up impacted by their shed rate too. I would expect that. To oh yeah, the Bub was gone. It's just gonna just be gone. I also put like racetrack the the r and t from mopars on them and yeah. that, it went away i'm like damn it okay so we are approaching the end of our dye job so now you're going to be sitting and like i said your dog's going to be very impatient by this point but when you with this kind of coat you really want to make sure that you're letting it sit so a lot of times i'll just keep going through and like right now i'm finding spots that i'm not too happy about um we can go over here there we go okay so there's gonna be a little white in the face just because she said cuss words at me when i did that last time and made my chin blue thank you <laughs> Choo -choo. i um i normally don't wear gloves gloves make me feel disconnected and i don't know i just feel like they just get in my way um I'm usually pretty good about not getting dye on my hand, but I'm also not trying to teach people at the same time. Um, don't worry about like, see how this stuff kind of looks muddy back here. Don't worry about that because that's gonna, it's gonna light, your dye does lighten up once you bathe it. All righty. Um, so Adriana's asking, do you wait till the poodle scare grows back before dyeing? Um, I don't know if you need clarifying information. I um, I mean, I guess here. it just depends on how short. Like, if you have a poodle and it's like, let's say you shaved it down, like it had matted and it was shaved in a 10, I would wait till it was at least like a, I ideally like a two or a four comb is going to be best because then it's going to grow out and hold a lot more of the color. If they're naked, I mean, there'll still be color, but it's going to grow out and just be like on the tip, which could still look cool. But I typically like, ideally, if I'm working on a poodle, I take them down with a two. So I can do like leopard and zebra and crazy stuff. Like I have a dog, like um, on her dog, we're gonna do a actual portrait of a ghost, but that's a short haired dog. <laughs> so with short hair, you could do portraits because his name is Ghost, he's a bull terrier. So I'm excited about that, but that's gonna be complicated. Um, but when you got, if you have too long of a coat, it's gonna be really hard to hold design. So you could put a lot of effort. I've seen creative groomers mess that up really bad where they, tried to do leopard and then it just ended up looking like blur. Like little wavy sperms. What did I do with the black? Oh. <laughs> la, 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 la. 
It's so quiet in my salon. It's never quiet in here. Oh, Corona. I know a lot of you guys are open. Us Washington groomers are like, ah, matted doodles everywhere. So right now I'm just doing what I did on the other side. So it's not really anything interesting. I'm just kind of putting in some pink and stuff and doing that splatter thing. And making noises because that's what I do. Don't stick your brush in the black dye. Um, yeah, we're getting to that stage where if you guys want me to a ask, answer questions about how to implement it and stuff, like, you know, or how to get clients interested in this kind of thing, um, I am here because I'm not having to try to juggle what I'm doing anymore. Do you keep a portfolio? <laughs> I do, I do. We, ha I have it on my website and I have it on my personal that page. That was a, a me question. <laughs> oh, that's a Carla. You're, it's, yes, you in the back with the mask. <laughs> Practicing good social distance. Well, the problem with this is that you can't really do this with social distance because I would have already been like, okay, we're done because she left. The dog left. <laughs> she said, F off. She says, this isn't six feet. I'm out. She's like, I'm done with you. I can't handle this anymore. Okay. She's so good. All right. So I'm going to quit putting dye on her because I think she hates that. So we got, like, I guess you guys can kind of see, like, the fun colors and stuff going on. Um... Like I stated before, once you rinse, everything gets a little bit lighter. Except I'm, I lied. Um, just so everybody gets it in case others aren't reading the comments, um, Adriana's asking where we're located. We are in Burien, Washington, which is right outside of Seattle. We're right by SeaTac Airport. Um, we have a very versatile... We're very lucky to live in a very versatile community where this kind of thing, we have a lot of, you know, LBGT, so we have a big pride event. So a lot of people really get into this color work and stuff. So that's pretty lucky. You also have to know your demographic. Your best seller to start with grooming or creative grooming is definitely going to be around holidays. People love it. And you can offer temporary things like we can airbrush, uh, you can do temporary tattoos. Like these are all ways to get people interested in it. My favorite is glitter. <laughs> Lots of glitter. <laughs> like this covered in glitter. <gasps> I just want to see a 4th of July away. dog. I want to see a 4th of July dog. For, <laughs> no, I've already done those. I know, but I haven't seen pictures yet. I'm not very patriotic. <laughs> I'm not either. I just think it would be funny. <laughs> I want to do, so I want to do like a 60s kind of like shag, psychedelic, you know, I have all the flowers and crazy stuff, rainbow thing. But I like to give myself these projects and then my bestie over there is always like, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, challenge accepted. And then I'm like, the day of, I'm like, fuck. We've got Naomi. Fudge. I could say fudge. It's rumors. <laughs> Plus, I said that with a hiss. I didn't actually say the K. <laughs> no children in the group. Um, Naomi saying hi from London. Hi, Naomi. Okay, so we're going to probably let her sit for... You can tell them she's been sitting quite a while. We're, we're going to do count, count off for 10 or 15 minutes there, Carla. Okay. So I'm just adding some more. So if you can see, I'm just kind of... Trying to add a little blip, 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 blip. And then, like I said, key to good creative is really good. Let's get in. Let's get, come, come get a little closer. Get a little closer. Okay. Really good brush work into these colors. See how that's like, yes, splendid. Very important. This is what keeps your colors from looking like, that's very boring. You want to natural, organic. I don't know if any of you guys are actually painters. Um, I know the, the ones I know of you are. So you understand that like having good brush strokes is everything. Is he doing? She's watching the birds. You look at the, oh, they're pigeons. They're flying. They they're have babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she... um, Sarah is asking if a patch test should be carried out before coloring is what we do with humans. I would. You never know, like, and also, like, if it's good to have a dog with client history, 
Like if you're like, oh, well, Lily has really bad skin and she's prone to hot spots. Even though this is a natural thing, it's made with vegetable oil. So adding more oil to a skin that already has a problem processing oil is not good. So doing a little patch test is good. One of the things that I really like to do, and this is something that once I keep bringing up my bestie because I miss her, Lindsay will always do is she cuts, when she has a long haired dog, she cuts, she puts it in rubber bands and then she cuts the hair and then she dyes that hair so she has an actual sample to show clients. And you can see kind of what that color does with that type of coat. So that's also a fun thing to do. If you guys have a bunch of hair, have some fun with some dye and learn, practice your techniques before you're dealing with something that's moving, like this one. When I was cleaning out to redo the office back there, I found one of those bags and I was like, what is this for? Mystery solved. Oh, that's now Lindsay I know. did that. Thank you, Lindsay. We just had to go around to dyeing it. She was there was no dye. <laughs> but now I understand that's, that is awesome to know, actually. Yeah, that was for dyeing. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so is he a good girl so um i'm going to talk about bathing really quick okay so kelsey's going to do the honors of going back there and bathing because carrying you guys around back there will probably end in the tragedy and also you know it's just easier um so with bathing with this i know you guys are worried about colors running into each other but when you're doing a dye job, you should always use cold water. Now, believe me, it sucks. They don't like it. But cold water is going to keep all your colors from collabing too much. If you use hot water, it opens the skin pores, and then all that will just together. So what I usually do is I will take the cold water, and I will start on this side, like with the dark, and go in. And then once I get those colors rinsed, I'm rinsing in a downward angle with the cold. And, you know, after I'm done and all the colors out, I'll usually take just a tiny bit of Dawn and rub into these lighter tones just to pull anything that might have sat. Um, make sure they're rinsed because if they're not rinsed, it will stain. Because if, like, I had a dog the other day that was sitting, it only had a purple tail, and it was sitting, and I, we little dye sat on its foot, and it had little kind of purple tootsies. So this stuff will stain. So cold water. And rinse, 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 rinse. And then a little Dawn. Like, I only use Dawn. I don't really want my dark colors to bleed. I'll use a little Dawn just in these lighter areas just to pull it out a little bit more and have it pop. Look at my hands. And we have another question from Katie. Oh, my goodness. Um, they're asking if this uh, dye is better used on long-haired dogs or with an airbrush. Um, this dye is well airbrush you wouldn't use this dye for airbrush um they have airbrush dye where you can you have to dilute it yes but um they do have air it just depends on if you want temporary or permanent um that i i prefer the permanent because to me um the temporary color is amazing but it has to sit a lot longer and it doesn't come out as fluid plus i'm like if you're gonna do it go big have your dog look like this for a long time it's a lot of work so um, yeah, this definitely is good for long coats, short coats. Um, airbrushing, I would definitely like, you know, make sure you're practicing diluting your dyes really good. The new shampoo, the new shampoo dye thing is really cool. I don't know if you guys have tried that where you just let it sit on the dog and get a whole pink dog. It's amazing. Would have saved so much of my stress back in the day. <laughs> So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but um, I mean, permanent color is going to be, the permanent color is going to pop a lot more. Yeah, do you want to go? I think that, how long has it been? Where are we at with the? Uh, we are at almost 10 minutes. And then we, then we are going to see how it turned out. I need to wash my hands. Like, let's see, how are your hands? Oh, look. Da, 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 da. Yes. Oh, we got a hand sanitize. We cut a hand. Shame. Kelsey, I don't know where your hand's been, especially you. <laughs> hand sanitizing. Ta-da. Lavender. Yes. All right, so this is really brushed in. Um, anybody have any questions about the bathing before she gets sent off? Um, I, I definitely don't recommend doing a whole shampoo rinse. You want the dye to, you don't, shampoo will take dye out. 
I only put it on these spots, like where I want it to brighten up. She's like, I'm so, so over there. She's like, I'm going to slide my butt on the floor and make it nice and fun for all of you. I was just going to carry her. Hey, baby. Are you mad? You won't kiss me anymore. Okay. He says, I am mad. Your hand sanitizer smells funny. <laughs> it does. All right. Okay. Where are we at in the timer? This is the uh, fun part of beginning we, to end. So this is when I just get to entertain you with my antics. Uh, so the timer started at 158. It is 205. We do have a couple other questions and comments coming through. Okay. Um, which lasts longer, permanent or semi-permanent? Okay. Permanent's definitely going to last longer. Semi-permanent, like, definitely. Semi-permanent works, but you have to, like, the, the wait time, like, if this was semi-permanent, we would have to sit here another 20 or 30 minutes. It just needs a little longer to sit. It does work, but it's just not meant to hang on as long. Um, so your permanent does last longer. And those just coming in, a dye job like this could last anywhere from, uh, depending on how often the owner washes this dog, like in a month to three to four months on the short coats. Now, a dog that's longer hair, you could see them, you know, and it'd be like six months later and they still have dye that you have to shave off. So it's definitely a commitment. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, if that answers that question. What other question? Um, do we have? So a couple comments to you. Uh, Kevin, who is, does creative grooming in the UK. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Um, uh, was like, uh, you know, talking about giving dogs little breaks. What do you do to give dogs breaks? And what do you look for as far as stress indicators that they need? Um, that's a me question that I felt like. I definitely, this is, beyond, this is, that's a very good question because um, I definitely don't like this to be torture in any way. Um, I, when I have dogs come in for a creative, like, I don't know if you, I will, I will post some comments on this thread later of some of my bigger jobs that I've done where it's been like color lifting and as well as color. So those dogs, I usually will a lot break. So I'll have them come in for a day and we'll do the color lift bath, go home, maybe and part of the haircut, but the haircut's usually first. Um, and then the next day we'll have them do color and, you know, a lot of times I'll do, this is such a small job. You could do it all at once, but with the bigger ones, I'll put on some color and then I'll give them a bath, let them run around, let them go potty for like an hour or so, put them back on the table, continue. But this is when it's a bigger dye job, I definitely suggest breaking it into different days because dogs shouldn't have to have five or six baths in one day if you're doing all these weird color things and dogs need to be dogs and they get antsy. Um, I do recommend if the owners are okay, giving them a little CBD and lots of yummy cookies because their muscles can get sore. Ha being able to let them sit down is definitely vital. Water, having someone around for water, but you know how dogs won't do that. But um, yeah, plan out your time. And uh, that's why when I do one of those big jobs, I charge a lot of money because I, it takes up my entire day, maybe two days. So I have jobs ranging anywhere from 400 to 700, 800 bucks, depending on what we're doing. So that's what we can get into of pricing. But animals first, let them have potty breaks, let them have breaks, let them be dogs. Like, she's like, um, hey, excuse me, lady, like, just hitting that practice right what you preach, you. woman. <laughs> um, and then All right, I, let's go I get did, her rinsed. I did address this um, as a comment, but I wanted to make sure that we addressed it. On she's going to get rinsed well. real quick. Yeah, we just hit 10 minutes. But we're going to, we're going to, we're going to talk. We're going to keep talking. Um, Matthew is asking if we lightened this dog first or if this is over white patches on the dog. Um, yes, this dog was white and brindle to begin with. So we're utilizing the lighter spots. Um, if you are dealing with a dog that's gray, um, there are colors that will hold over gray. Like any, when you have a darker tone, you always need that, in, the color to sit a little bit longer to go over it. So if you're trying to, if this dog was all this color and you wanted to get rainbow into it, you could do it. You would just have to let it sit longer. And you can also use a, a regular dryer and apply heat because heat's going to help get you know, the dye to saturate a little better. All right. Now you have me all to yourself. Now? And I know you talked about this briefly for a moment, but Hunter was asking if you liked the shampoos. They'd only used it once and not sure they did it right or used enough. So um, you know, I haven't got to use it too much. Yeah. I do like it, but you know, I'm kind of old school where I just, I'll just dye the dog all the way through. Um, I think it is a good basis to like, 
you know, start a color job. Like I would do it and then want to add more to it, honestly. But it's also the trick to a lot of reasons why these creative jobs that you guys are trying go bunk is not having patience and letting them sit for a long time. Now that may mean that you're going to get colorful and the dog's going to get a little antsy, but that's vital for your dye jobs to have proper sitting time. I never listen to the instructions on bottles. I think that's why my color is so vibrant because I always add a little extra time. So that's the same with the shampoo. The shampoo is a diluted dye. So it's always gonna be a little pastel and Easter eggy. It's never gonna be full color, but letting it sit for a little longer will definitely make those jobs turn out better for you. All right. Do we have any more questions? Let me see. More positive comments, no more questions yet. <laughs> Um, do you, if you guys have questions about charging and stuff, um, that's what I will be going over in the book. I'm not doing a tutorial in the book. I'm going over how to deal with some of the stuff that happens with creative grooming. Now, um, one of the big issues that we have with creative grooming is, you know, the fear of it are people like, I heard that it killed a dog or the ear fell off, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Dealing with this foo par and being able to prepare, which means when you post your stuff on so social media, you need to make sure that you're tagging right, putting, you know, animal free or animal cruelty free, vegetable oil, and also teaching your client about education versus getting mad at them about it because most people are coming from not knowing anything. So that's your job to teach them about it. Also teaching your clients that get these huge creative jobs that going to walk their dog is no longer a five minute task. It's a social media frenzy. Everybody wants. We had a, my one dog that me and Lindsay did as a giant tigger and I had to drop that dog off and they didn't tell me they lived by a school. That was fun. So everybody's like, tigger. So I, I like to prepare my clients like you can give them uh, a flyer that kind of answers all the questions. So when they're walking their dog, they can hand it out. So these are certain things to kind of explore. I'll get it, I get into it way more deep in the book. The book is going to be rad. There's a lot of cool artists doing a lot of cool things. So I really think that that's a good staple for you guys to have. Um, but that being said, like that's a big issue if people not understanding dye and making us seem like we're being cruel when we're not. The side effects of dyeing a dog is soft coat and fabulous. So there's that. Adriana's asking, how do we get the dye out of the, the tubs? Baking sodas or um, that you know, like it doesn't it doesn't stay very well as long as you clean it immediately after. It should be fine. Um, you can like it'll come off just like anything with like bleach and you know any of the basic cleaners. If you let it sit for a long time, then it's gonna stain like this. <laughs> That's screwed gonna wear gloves in my shoot. <laughs> do you, do you um, when you're doing um, dye jobs, do you normally? Do I normally what? Oh, wear gloves, no, I discussed that. It makes me feel awkward. I don't know, I just end up tearing them and I, every time I use gloves, I just, it just ends up having a big hole in it. I'm just kinda, I mean, this pretty. It's like art. Um, Jasmine just came into the video and is asking if we use heat during the color process. Heat is great. Um, I, I like using heat. Uh, I use like a basic human hair dryer and just kind of brush in because it helps. Heat is going to speed up your time of letting it sit for sure. Definitely. But uh, I mean, of course, don't use too much heat. The poor dog will overheat, but little stages of it. Definitely a good, good idea. We have more. Uh, we're reloaded to check and see. Not yet. We're renovating our shop right now, so there's stuff everywhere, or else I'd be like, take a look at our shop. But no, not going to do Lots that right now. Changes, you can. Good I know. Nobody could doubt that we're not open because you look in here and it's just like, <laughs> how many bottles of vinegar do you guys need? <laughs> See, I'm curious. I'm gonna try. The How many on the floor bunny to cages do you need? Oh my god. That's what I do at home. I use vinegar on like, you know, not that my hair is crazy colored right now, but it usually is. And I just like take some vinegar to it. Yeah. We'll find out. I hear the rinsing. Pretty soon we'll have a finished product. So yeah, you guys utilize me for any questions you might have. I know there's a lot of new creative groomers out there. Um, 
I'm, I'm here to help from anything from setting up creative in your shop or coming up with designs or anything like fill the time or you could ask me what, you know, what my star sign you, is or something. What you, what's your sign? What's my sign? You here often? Um, what tools were you using as far as uh, like asking? I don't know if you went over that a whole lot. You just used them. Um, well, I'm using, um, I use all the Opaws brushes. I have those. And then I also buy, like, I go to Michael's and I buy, like, a paintbrush set, and I use those as well um, for, like, tiny detail. Plus, it's like, I don't care about this brush. If it messes up, I don't care about it. It costs, like, 20 cents. But it's good for detail work. Um, I would really like to show you guys when we get, I've got to test ghosts to see how ghost is. But when I do that portrait work where I'm going to do an actual beautiful female ghost like art painting would love to have you guys around for that but i don't know how that's going to go first <laughs> ghost might be like la, 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 he's, been, he's been pretty good i he's uh we'll see how we do he liked it here my next step is to put him on a table and see what he does on the table. i i feel like this is kind of the, the yeah, boring part. just we keep talking about my, my dog ghost my ghost my dog is a blind bull terrier and he's pure white so yeah. great for doing paints on Yes. But he's a rescue and blind, so he's very excitable and very happy and a little dopey and prone to running into things and stepping off things. So we have to work on getting him on, trained on the tables and making sure he stays calm. Yeah, but, I'm seeing if I have any of the, I don't think this one loads my... Oh, picture, oh, picture. I'm kind of glad because that's why the girls at the shop are like, what are you doing in this picture? I'm like, why, are you, why can you see that? Um... <laughs> I mean, like, this is some fun kind of, like, portrait-y kind of work. Like, it's a misfit skull. That's fun. That's used with, like, isolator cream. This one was used. The isolator is great. This is actually a dog. Uh, the base of the dog is gray, so I added in the skull to it. So that's, uh, I, I love the color isolator so much for doing fancy work. This is kind of an example of a rainbow dog. I'm sorry, I'm trying to not get the reflection, but it's really hard. Um, rainbow dog with longer hair. So this was a lot of brushing in. So see, it does work really well with these coats, but I wouldn't start that if you're a beginner because that's a little more difficult to get lines. So let's see, what else do we got here? Or maybe you guys want some beetle juice? That one I did with Lindsay. See, yeah, this is the beginning to end finish of grooming. So at this point, I can either answer questions or tell you bad jokes. Oh, look, if Jessica, if you're still on here, this is the one Jessica did. Isn't it so cute? She did so proud of her. Lay of that. All right, this one. This one's really fun if you want to collab with somebody, collab and do a tie-dye. Because what was cool about this is me and Lindsay each did one side. And it actually made the tie-dye look more real because it's two different interpretations of it. So, like, if you have a good friend and you want to have some fun and you want to do something truly organic, have two different people, don't plan it, and just go for it. See, and that just turned out, it's one of my favorite ones. I just love it. Oh, look, here's more of Jessica's work. Look at that. Her little hot rod. She loves Star Wars. Do you guys know that? I didn't think if you met her, you would never know. She never talks about it, ever. All right, so this is one of the bigger dye jobs. So this is one where I took, you know, I do this over two days because this dog is a gray poodle that turned into a Lisa Frank dog. And I will post these in the comment of these live feeds. I'm just trying to show you guys some stuff to base. Some examples here. And then there's like stupid stuff like this. This was just a client gave me an extra $110 just to do a green chest. That was so easy. So there's a lot of upselling that you can do that's easy. Like that. 
sure, sure. I was responding to somebody asked what I used the vinegar for, so I told them what I, why I ended up here and oh. what I used it for. <laughs> I am going to test it on these colors because it works great at home. It like, takes like a couple times. But it <laughs> this floor is... When I dyed my hair blue all the time, it worked great to get the blue off This floor skin, is so. beautiful. We just... Uh, I want to add more color. Okay, so questions. What percentage of the dye cost do you use to calculate the, the dye? And I'm going to add on what... What other methods do you use to calculate the cost charging? of? Yeah, it's okay. The time, the, the guy, the so room. what I do with my clients, because you know what sucks the most is having your whole schedule blocked off for one of these big jobs and then they don't come. So you're out a lot of money, especially if you bought product. So what I do is I do a consult and I'm like, okay, you want a rainbow standard poodle? We're going to need three bottles of this, three bottles of that, blah, blah, blah. I send them over the receipt from Opaz. I charge them for all the dye. That's their deposit. They pay for all the dye. That dye is exclusively for their animal. So all bought. And then if they back out, I have a bunch of dye. So there's that. Um, and that's their deposit. After that, I usually calculate a total like an hour. So, you know, your, let's say your standard grooming haircut costs, what, 100, 110 bucks. Um, after that, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be working on, let's say you're going to be doing just some leopard spots on the dog. Probably going to take about three hours. So let's say you're a newer groomer at Creative. Do a base rate of 40 an hour. So then you're going to charge. So if you had three ex extra hours of Creative, you're going to charge an extra 120 on top of that 110 for the haircut. And that's how you're going to base it. Like my, my rate is a lot higher than that and that's just because I'm really fast. So what my girls can do in the shop, I could do in half the time. So we gotta make that, you wanna make sure it balances. But I will say if you're gonna take your whole day, charge at least 300, 400 bucks, at least, at least. So I hope that kind of gives you some guidelines um, as far as pricing. But that's how I do it. And um, so far it's worked out really good. When people invest in the dye, they don't cancel on you because it's, you know, pricey. Karen Jones wants to come hang out when we have the, the, the dye day because the puppy will go. <laughs> they what? If you were joking about having a, a dye party, and Karen Jones wants to be here for that. They have three white dogs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once this is over, we should totally have a dye party. I would love to do some in-person tutorials because I think it's way more fun than just sitting here staring at my mug while I'm waiting for this guy. Oh, we have, we have a beautiful rainbow puppy to see. Okay, ready? <laughs> now mind you last time I did her dye job I think she sat a little longer in the dye but she was gonna like fall off the table so we can kind of see all right oh, there's my pretty girl all right so let's see la la it's okay Choo -choo, you're doing a good job so la da can you hold her neck up well so ta ta ta! Now we have paint splotches. See, this is a really easy dye job, and it's like pretty rad. Especially look at those tootsies, and look how her nails are now rainbow. La la la! She's like, stop doing this. <laughs> and then we'll just go around to the side. So we have the little splotches and the neck. I didn't spend a lot of time on these. You can see, like, this is a good example of how color doesn't stain as deeply if you don't spend time on it as long but that that's cool i kind of like the, the oops dog. that's kind of showing me back there too. oh you don't want to see carla <laughs> nah. me and my schmuck and my uh, okay my so aunt. this is well that looks like it's just white because oh there we go so you can see it's a little lighter do 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 so yeah if there's any questions but this is a this is a really i expect to see some of these on the opaz group and if you need a, a price purchase list of what you need to do something on this dog, I will totally help you not overbuy or underbuy. Um, but this is something I would love to see you guys try to do. It's a really easy dye job. It's really like, uh, I mean, I, I think for this one, I, I, I'm pretty sure I charged like 300, 400 for it, but um, that's me. Um, this is also, it was. It was 400? Yep. Okay. Would it, would it vary depending on where, I mean, obviously market, like through an East Coast United States that might be different? Well, I mean, like, it's all about your demographics. I live in the Mecca of Amazon, so there are people with 
Lots of money through here. I dyed my moonstone green. Oops. All right. Anyway, sorry, ADHD. Um, so, yeah, it's all about your demographics. So, I mean, I, you guys feel free to add me. Um, I am Lauren Piston. Uh, I am happy to help you guys get this established so we can have a more colorful world. Especially right now with times being so dark, let's just rainbow everything and make it happy. Let's just have pretty colors. And I know you guys probably have a lot of dogs at home that you can start doing this on. And I see that our lovely Opaz ladies are giving you links for all the dyes and things in here, which they are awesome and super helpful and have always been there for me when I've had questions. So either way, um, this is a good way to start. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have short haired dogs or even a dog. Like if you want to do this on a poodle, I would definitely recommend shaving it down pretty short. And it's also not going to be as easy to move the brush through. It's going to get a little, because, you know, that cotton kind of fur kind of stops a little bit. But you can do it. Just more brushing. Uh, what, other, what other questions do we have? I know. Isn't it so pretty? This part, she was like, eh. Look at your little chin. I tagged you on a couple comments where people wanted a little bit more information. Um, more, more misanthropes for things, too. So, um, yes, I can. be tagged and commenting when she's not showing her lovely face to you all on the camera there. That's my lovely face. <laughs> so I live in the Midwest, and I feel like no one ever yeah. pays that much. To what you do you do? think? Um, oh, things for thirty. I mean, I guess yeah, like uh, it, I guess like what I'd have to see kind of what your base pricing is. Um, start off small, like especially if you guys are trying to build your portfolio. Maybe take on some clients and be like. I will do the dye job for the cost of the groom just to get some of your art out there. Uh, you can also just, I mean, if you're in the mid, just, feet, just, tails. just ear, feet, or tails, yeah, smaller things, start small. Um, or you can, you know, just adjust to your rates. Like, my rates are a lot higher because I'm in Seattle. So Midwest, you know, you could you probably end up doing this for like 150 200 bucks. But it's, price yourself for what your work look like. Every groomer should know what their hourly rate is. All of us should have an idea of what we make. Um, if you don't, you need to sit down and figure it out. And that would be just average out what you do in a day and then divide it by the hours that you were there. If you're doing creative grooming, you're going to be there extra hours. Like you're going to like this, you know, we did, I did this pretty quick. It may take you a little <laughs> longer. Just know your timing and pay yourself for your work because it's hard work. So if you're going to spend eight hours on a dog, then that client needs to understand and they need to pay for that. And also, it's not just the dye job. You're going to be letting that dog go on potty breaks. You're being a daycare and you're also making them fabulous. So charge for it. Um, like I said, like if you guys do want to send me kind of a basic price list of what you've got going on in your salons, I'd be more than happy to help you guys figure out like what prices you should do for certain projects. I totally don't mind. And yay to rainbow. It's not loading any more thingies. Um, it was being glitchy a couple times. It's still doing things over here. So um, we don't have any new comments yet. Um, okay, well... If, does anybody have any last questions? Anybody that I could answer for you? Choo -choo. Tiny, tiny bit of a time delay between what they see on the feed. Yeah, yeah. Facebook, you gotta love it. Right, Rachel loves the apron. <laughs> ah, thanks. Thanks, Opaz. Andrea, Brad, they, sent it, they sent it to me, the lovely Opaz ladies. Gave me a little apron to wear, which is great because I didn't make my smock dirty. But look at this pretty beast. So beautiful. We should go walk her and bring some color back to our city. Twinkle time. Yes. She's All so right. Good. good job. All right. It looks like, looks like, um, you know how many people are still logged in? 34. We got 34. All right, guys. Well, I'm still here to answer some questions. Um, uh, if you guys have any questions, questions right now about anything that could help you with establishing creative in your salon. Um, I want to throw it back out there that Opaz will have a book coming out. Um, I will be posting when it will be available to purchase. It's going to have fabulous tutorials and also I will be featured in this book telling you how to set up your actual system in your salon. Um, but I am still here for a second to answer any questions you guys might have. 
Um, Rachel is wondering, um, how do you blend the colors together so it's like a fade? Um, so uh, this live video, I'm going to hit, uh, We get, you got to make sure I hit save because I don't remember yeah. how to do that because I won't. Um, do you want me to ping Andrea and make sure she sends you instructions? <laughs> Andrea's like oh, she's watching. Listening. She's hey, watching. Um, I think it's, there's a little save. Anyway, uh, well, if you watch the beginning, I go into it. So uh, with these colors, I, I brush in and then I take the brush and I really use the brush to paint and blend them together. Um, you can even use like makeup sponges to blend if you're more comfortable with that. I like the brush because I like to get into those hairs. So that's how you get that nice ombre look. All right, do we have any? I can't wait for the book either. Hi, Lynn, you're welcome. The colors will look best on Hi, a black Andrew. standard poodle. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I know. Hi. <laughs> We're just making sure we hit save on the video. I'm not very, uh, not very tech savvy. I got it, I got it. Well, what I mean, colors will work best on a there. black standard poodle? Okay, so a black standard poodle isn't going to really show much color. Um, you would be, if you're going to do a black standard poodle, of course, I recommend doing tests first. Um, and also rewatch this video. We go into that, but I'm going to answer that again because it's very important. You want to get lightning cream. Um, Opaz does sell really great lightning cream. Um, so you would put that on the dog before their bathe so it can work with their oils to keep their skin safe. And then you want to separate, I would do separate days. I would get the animal a little bit lighter. You don't have to pull a lot of color. You just need it to be more of a gray. And then um, the next day you can do color work because it's usually a lot and do medicated bath. But yeah, that's the best colors. Uh, if you get airbrush though, you can paint temporary color onto a black poodle and it's fine. Uh, oh no, the if you rinse if you cold. rinse the if you rinse the dog really well with the cold water, what I usually do is I start with cold and then I'll give them a little hot bath afterwards because they're chilly. Um, that will get rid of all of it. Like rinse, 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 until rinse, rinse. rinse, rinse. Water can, rinse. When you go to wash the dog the next time, you might see some color bleeding, but that's that's normal. But it won't come off on the customer's thing. Like this isn't why my hands are like that. That was before. Um, the coat, the color will not damage the coat. Um, it's a vegetable oil base. Like it's not going to cause damage to the coat. Now lifting lifting dog hair, like lifting color is like bleaching our heads. Um, it's a little less of abrasive. They don't use this ammonia and that, but it's still, that will damage the coat, which is why I recommend clients come in to get a haircut eight weeks after doing bleach jobs, just so we can cut those dead ends. I think that's, yeah, so Paws Lightning Cream is great. Ah, I'm excited to stream too, Yang. I'm really, this was a really fun time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I am Lauren Piston. If you guys have any questions, I will be commenting on this after. And I will be happy to individually work with any of you if I could help with anything at all. I've done dying before, not on a poodle, only on a short coat, like shepherd cross. I can't, that's a lot of fussy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If you guys have any questions for me, I'm here for you. But I mean, I, it's it's good having so many people on. You want to go potty? She wants to go potty. Um, anyway, you guys stay safe out there. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with each of you and I'm looking forward to doing more of these. And in the future, when we don't have to be so far apart, maybe you guys can come and do a tutorial here at the salon. Um, thank you, Opaz, for having me. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. This baby's got to take a poop. <laughs> All, right. All right. So if there's not any more questions, we're going to sign off. Oh, how can I? Okay, I'll answer this one real quick. How can I paint hearts in a short-haired dog? Um, if you're going to paint design, like what I usually do is I will use like an eraser marker and a stencil and get your design in there first and then do the dye job. You don't want to freehand dye work when you're doing shapes because that can go south and then all of a sudden you ended up with a lava lamp instead of a heart. All right, I love you too, Jessica. Thank you guys.
This has been so much fun. Thanks, Andrea. All right, ladies. Well, after that question, we're just going to... Where's the off button and how do you say I, it? <laughs> I love you guys. I miss most... Wait, whoop. That was a phone call coming in. Bye, guys. I'm my face until...